You guys have been back at the Oasis for a little while now. You came back, you got Raka's Doomslayer armor and his sword, so now you guys have all of your weapons that Gregor and Lorna had tracked down for you to help you in your war effort. And they have a couple other uh, quests for you, so you can either go to Lorna or you can go to Gregor. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with Lorna, if that's the consensus. So you guys are going to go to Lorna, so you walk up to Lorna. She's kind of next to the little shack there. Uh, the princess has been recovering inside, but she has been keeping a steady guard over the door for a while now. She looks at you as she, as she comes in and she says, I have news. It appears the Black Scales have begun poaching in the wildlands. We're not sure exactly what they're hunting, but there are many mythical beasts that roam the woods. If they can tame them, capture them, set them loose upon the populace, it would cause extreme amounts of collateral damage. It's probably best if we stop them. My scouts have located a convoy of them that have gone through the woods. They've lost many of their members to various plants and beasts throughout the woods, but if you strike now, you may be able to free anything they might have captured. I'm just going to get onto the fucking the skeletal centipede fucking train. I'm going to get on my griffin like a civilized human being. I'm going yeah. gonna, gonna to be at the very front like uh, with my dark blade like, Onward, you skeletal steed! Just I'm gonna... skitters forward on like cracked legs. Do, do we still have the uh, the scorpion? Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride the giant scorpion I killed. Well, Arch is the one that controls it. He'll have to allow you to do that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, so, Jam, you are riding the scorpion. You are out front with your dark saber pointed out into the air. Everybody else is riding the camel centipede. <laughs> nice. Besides Raka, he is flying with um, his griffin. I was going to say, you could transform it into, like, a, a riding board, but you could also have to be pulled by something. So it's either the scorpion or the camel centipede. Better are you going to sketch on centipede. the camel centipede? <laughs> Just grab onto its ass? Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it, good idea. You use some vines from your armor after you form your little snowboard thing. You're basically being pulled along on the back of it on the board across the sand dunes as the centipede scurries along with the uh, scorpion uh, leading the way. So you guys are able to travel out, and the Wildlands is kind of like, as I've explained before, the Wildlands is kind of this big area where there's a lot of uh, vegetation. It's the only really green area on the southern side of the continent. So you're basically kind of, you start out in the desert, then you start getting into denser and denser jungle. And as you keep getting closer, everybody roll a spot check. Okay, so we're going to go down the list. So for the spot check, Arch rolled a 15, Cham rolled a 27, Velnos rolled a 21, and Rocker rolled a 15. I'm going to say all of you are able to notice this because it's pretty obvious. There is a plume of smoke coming up from, it looks like a maybe a couple of miles to your west. It looks like it's an active campfire and it is starting to get dark out. Um, Frog, do you want to go check that out and make sure they're not friendly? If they are friendly, or I don't really care. You could stab all of them. Honestly, let's just take the campfire. I'll do it. Work's already done. Good luck. Basically, are all you guys going to kind of make camp while he does that and kind of looks at the situation? I'm going to follow him. Okay, Why you're going to follow. Rocco, are you going to follow them as well? Are you going to do any air reconnaissance with the Griffin, or are you just going to camp out with Arch until they come back? I'm going to fly over there with a sack of Bibles. I yeah. don't remember your inventory having a sack of Bibles, but I'm going to allow it. So, Raka, I'm going to have you do a spot check from the air, and I'm once you go over, I'm also going to roll for the camp to see if they notice you. So that's 13 with my spot modifier. So I'm going to roll for them and see what they come up with. Oh, they rolled a nat 20. They fucking spotted your ass. So basically what you can see from the air, it's not a massive encampment of Dragonborn, but the thing is, is that it looks like they're carrying wounded with them, and it looks like they've kind of had their numbers thinned a little bit by the various creatures of the forest, but you still see about two dozen of them in the camp. They also appear to be dragging along behind them a large armored carriage that's being pulled by a uh, basically a giant sand lizard. Okay, instead of flying down to hand the Bibles out like a missionary, like I was planning to, I'm just going to start throwing them at the dragonborn. He's not aiming them, he's just dumping them. Okay, like, okay. Like so dropping them over like the little flyers over Tokyo. Okay, I'm going to say there's 20 of them because that's easier for me with a d20. So I'm going to roll a d20 and see how many of them actually get hit by Bibles. And then out of those, I'm going to see who actually was transitioned over into your specific religion. Uh, 17 of them. All right, so you, you hit 17 of the 24 with the Bibles. Each one of those <laughs> Dragonborn is hit with a Bible, which also means that they are not going to be able to shoot at you. And since you covered enough of them, I'm going to say you, you hit most of the archers, so they don't actually fire any arrows about you. 
However, this will raise their hostility and their suspicion. So Cham, even though you're sneaking around, they might be kind of weary of what you're doing once you get there. But out of the 17 that were hit by Bibles, how many were converted into your specific religion? Only one! <laughs> okay, so this is how this situation plays out in the camp. Rocky, you deserve to know this. The one dragonborn who is converted basically takes the Bible and he starts to read it. And he keeps reading it and then he, he, he still slowly starts to exclaim that this makes everything make so much sense. As soon as that happens, all the other dragonborn around him immediately take out their swords and stab him to death for betraying the one true dragon god and then leave his corpse on the ground. So now that we've gotten Raka's thing over with and he's semi thin the numbers, I guess, we're going to go to Velnos and Sham. So you guys are coming up on the encampment. So you guys can both roll move silently checks to see if you can move around and then you can roll either spot or listen checks. In the time that's taken for you to get there, the sun has gone down to the point where it's basically almost dark out. All right, so you are both able to, to successfully sneak into the brush and the thick jungle foliage around the camp. You can see a fire burning in the center of the camp, and it appears that they are eating another dragonborn, although you're not sure the reason why. He is impaled, shish on a stick, and being rotated around <laughs> and uh, seasoned. I'm going to get as close as I can, and I'm going to cast Deep Slumber. 10 hit die worth of creatures, which means you could affect basically five of them then, because each one of them has two hit die. And you can pick the five that you want to knock out since most of them are within range. I want to find the ones that look to be the biggest and the, the ones that's in charge. Roll a spot check to discern those, please. Basically, what you do is you look over the camp and you see that there appears to be a, a small grouping of three dragonborn that are all wielding very large hammers. They're a little bit bigger than the rest of them. They look like they can pack a bit more of a punch. And you see two other dragonborn that appear to be kind of the leaders, pseudo leaders. There's none that like stands out that's very ornate, but it seems like they are the ones that are uh, leading the pack because they're in a tent by themselves and it appears they're standing over a table with some piece of paper on it. It might be a map. So those are the five you're going to knock out. Then after that, I'm going to use a uh, darkness. It's a 20 foot radius. Okay. And you're starting from the center, I assume. That's going to encircle probably most of the dragonborn. So here's what's going to happen. First of all, you're using the sleep spell. So the two dragonborn that are in the tent, the two of them that are sort of the leaders of the group, basically you just see both of them and they just slowly start to wave back and forth as they're talking and then they collapse onto the table in front of them and immediately fall asleep. The three that are sitting around the fire by themselves with the hammers, they also fall asleep, but even though everybody can see it, since they've all kind of been drinking fire ale, they assume that uh, they just got shit-faced and passed out with each other. So nobody is any the wiser for that. However, when you use darkness in the area, I believe that that echoes out all light. And you're using that in the center of the camp, which is also where the campfire is. So all the campfire light is out. And at this point, I'm going to say the sun has gone down. So it is dark outside. So you've extinguished the only light source in the area. So that immediately prompts all of the dragonborn to start freaking out because suddenly the light just disappeared. They didn't see the fire blow out. It just wasn't there anymore and they can't see anything. So they, the camp begins to go into disarray and you hear a lot of them kind of running around. Now for the ones that are left, 18 remaining. So I'm going to roll a d20. One of them is killed in the chaos. They're kind of just running around. He bumps into somebody and another dragonborn stabs him in the stomach just in the disarray. Now they start running out of the cloud and into the actual darkness where they can now see the moon. But you guys are going to have to decide what you want to do with that. Velnos, you are still hidden. And Cham, you are still hidden. They do not know where you are. Could I extend a tendril using the amulet to one place, then quickly pull myself towards that end? Yes, you can do that. You, so if you do it, you're going to have to roll a balance check. I'm not going to make you roll a strength check because most of what you're doing is with the armor anyway. I'm going to pull myself towards the one that is further away from the group. Okay, so you're going to go off on kind of the far side. So basically what happened is you guys started at one point, Cham moved off to the right, you're going to move off to the left, so you'll be on opposite sides of the uh, jungle near the clearing. 21, okay. So basically you just pulled a Spider-Man. So you just shoot a, a vine out of your wrist, basically, like Spider-Man would. And it wraps around a tree that's farther away from you. You then pull yourself towards the tree at great speed. And you're going so fast that it's dark out that they really can't tell, especially because they're already kind of disoriented from Cham's little darkness spell. And you're able to land safely behind the next tree and retract the tendril before anybody notices. 
So again, they are still kind of confused on what's happening. They begin searching the area around the darkness sphere. The ones that have made it out anyway, um, there's probably about 10 of them now that have made it out of the cloud. There's still seven that are fumbling around in there and the five that are asleep. But basically they're kind of feeling their way around now to try and find out what caused the spell to happen. So they're looking for somebody, but they haven't found you yet. I'm going to jump into the the mist. It's not that far away from you, so I'm not going to make you roll. I'm just going to say you do that. In the darkness, you have no light, so you cannot see. You're going to have to go based on... I, you know, I'll go here. You can do a listen check in there and see if you can hear something. I you can base idea. your attack on that. You're just going to take a minus two to your attack roll. Okay. All right, so... And, and since, since you can't see me, I'm doing snake attack. Okay, so basically what you found was you found one of the Dragonborn warriors who's kind of wandering around in the darkness. You can perform a sneak attack on him. Uh, if you do kill him, it will not alert the other. Oh. And that's a crit. First one is a crit, because that's for your dark saber, and then the other one's for your dagger, your tongue dagger. Okay, roll for damage. 44 for your dagger as well. And that's an additional seven. So that's 51 damage to that dragon board. So basically what I'm going to say happens, you shoot your tongue dagger out and it goes right into the back of his skull. As you do that, you pull yourself forward and stab him in the back at the same time, moving the blade up and decapitating him. So you kill him immediately and he's dead. The others still do not, the ones that are inside the mist right now do not know that you're there. There's still six that are in there. Rock, are you still flying around on that griffin or did you go back to camp? After the Bibles hit them, he just kind of flew back to camp. His um, job was done. If you and Arch want to roll listen checks, you can see if you can hear the commotion coming from the camp because there is a rather large amount of noise now. So that's a 10 and a 13. Neither of you hear what's going on. Uh, all right, so Velnos, what did you want to try and do? I want to try and scarecrow one of them. Kill his ass, use the vines to essentially pull the puppeteer move on him and just make you, him You want You want to turn him stuff. into a, a puppet using the vines. I don't know if they're intricate enough to pull that one off, but I will let you attempt it. So uh, first of all, there are, are several that are wandering around near you, so you can kill, move out and kill them if you want to try to. So I will let you do that, and since you already have snuck around behind them, I'm not going to make you roll another sneak roll. You just have to roll to attack. It'll be a sneak. It'll be an attack of opportunity, so you're going to get a plus two. I'm going to use the scorpion move. Are you going to stab him through the chest, or are you going to stab him through the head? Uh, through the chest. I'm using both hands, so do I roll two? Damage? You would roll. You would roll two attacks. Yes. Okay. So the first one is going to hit. The second one is also going to hit. Basically, what you do on that one is that is enough to kill him. And pretty much what you do is you shoot two tendrils that go right through his back and out of the front of his chest, and then you pull him immediately back into the bushes. Now you're going to have the chance to use him as a puppeteer. So what you're going to do is your armor is going to produce vines that are going to weave their way around and under his armor. And they're basically going to kind of wrap his limbs so you can you can fake walk his limbs out there to try and make him seem like a puppet. It's probably going to look pretty fucking goofy, but I'm going to have you roll dexterity check because you're going to have to mentally control the armor in order to use the vines and make him walk. Oh. Okay. <laughs> This is gonna be so fucked. So this is how this happens. You are somehow able to perfectly manipulate that dragonborn corpse into doing what you want it to do. So you walk it out into the clearing where the other ones are. Are you gonna have it interact with anything? I'm gonna try and use it to scare the shit out of him. What are you gonna do specifically to do that? I'm just curious. Fast movement, lot of erratic and unnatural motion. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's an intimidation check. So you got a four. So basically what happens is you flay the the uh, dragonborn out and he kind of just flops on the sand. It, uh, it looks like somebody trying to like pretend to be a ghost but doing it very badly. And the other dragonborn are just kind of looking at it like, what the fuck is this? Uh, and I'm going to roll for their intelligences to see if they can discern what is happening. There are three of them that are currently looking at this random dragonborn that has now been strung up. Okay, so two of them are idiots, and one of them realizes what the fuck is going on and immediately cuts the tendrils that are holding the dragonborn up, releasing it. And uh, the others then see that it appears to be a corpse. They also look to see where the tendrils are coming from, and they're able to pinpoint your location in the woods. Well, that's going to happen. I'm going to do another listen roll. <laughs> no! You hear one of the dragonborn snoring, one of the ones you put to sleep. I'm going to say because of the, the sake of the fact that they're all right there and you knew they were right there, 
you just executed all three of the ones that had hammers that were sleeping around the fire. You take your dark blade and you slice the first one's throat. You stab the other one through the chest very quickly. And then the final one, you swing and decapitate him. All three of them are now dead. They died in their sleep and did not feel it at all. So all, all of those guys are dead. Rocket and Arch, roll listen checks to see if you can hear the commotion. Arch, you hear what sounds like screaming. U- Uhtred is still uh, is still kind of just like playing around with his uh, blue fire sword. She's just sitting there in her little bone chair made out of her camel, sipping some tea. She kind of cocks her head. Uhtred, darling, I think they fucked up. I think we should probably <laughs> attend them. She stands up and starts walking towards where they are. Rock, are you going to follow him? Nonsense. They are possible new converts. A shepherd never harms his flock. No, no, I think They're the dragonborn. other two fucked up. How do you mean? Well, one's a frog, and I mean, you've met the other one. Rocka, if you want to stick around the campfire and play with your fire sword, you're welcome to. Uh, Arch, you're going to continue on through the jump. Now- nah, he's going to follow him. He's just going to get up like, fine, fine. So you you guys begin making your way through the woods. Arch, I'm assuming your chair just spouts legs and that that's how that happens. I'm assuming oh, you yeah. don't actually walk. Um, okay, so... You continue on, and you guys are going to go, so I'm going to give them one more turn before you guys show up. We're going to go back, since Curtis just did his thing, we're going to go to Draylark. So, Velnos, what are you going to do now that they have they have noticed you? You still are behind the bushes, but they are coming closer, and they know you're there. So if you don't do something quickly, they will initiate combat. I want to know, you know the one that realized the shit and, yes. and he spotted me? I'm going to give him a wet willy but with vines. Are you going to put it through his head? Oh, yeah. I am going to count that as a dexterity check. It'll be a targeted attack, basically, because you're going to have to do something very, very specific. So you're going to take a minus two to each one of those rolls. Ooh, okay. Five would be an, it would be an 18. All right, so that one is going to hit. The first one is not because that's in that one, so that's an instant failure. So basically what happens is, is you put your vines out. One of them shoots into his ear. The other one just kind of like starts to tickle him for some reason. You're not sure why. You can roll for the second one for damage to see if you do anything serious to the Dragonborn. That is going to be an 18. So that's 18 damage directly to his head. You hit him at exactly the right angle because as he he's beginning to run towards you, but his head turns just enough. So when that second tendril goes in, it actually shoots right through the base of his head and out the other ear. That kills him instantly. You then shoot the tendril back into the woods. However, you have now engaged in combat, which means that you will have to roll for initiative against the other two dragonborn that have noticed you. They definitely don't have as much of a bonus as you, so it's going to be you, then one, then two. I want to keep doing a listening check. So this time you hear what appears to be a dragonborn archer. You can hear him drawing his bow. He's nearby. You know exactly what I'm going to do. Roll, roll the hit. You're going to take a minus two. <laughs> oh! Oh, fuck. I forgot fuck. to put the plus five as well. Uh, well, both of them are going to hit. The first one is not going to be a crit, but the second one will be. So your dagger will crit, but your dark saber will not. So that will be regular so... damage. But you do hit with both. So here's the, the sneak attack. Uh, I'm gonna, I, you don't have to roll the rest. He's dead. <laughs> He's very dead. You, you literally, all you do is you just turn your head and he's next, he's right near you. He's within tongue length and you shoot out that dagger and it goes right through the front of his fucking forehead and kills him instantly. You then retract it in an instant and he falls over dead on the ground. You are a fucking ninja. Now that that has happened, Arch and Rocky, you guys have shown up on the scene. So what you are viewing at this point, unless you're choosing to do a sneak roll to get up to it, is you see a whirling orb of darkness, basically, with a lot of yelling dragonborn inside. And you hear what sounds like a lot of zing, zing, zing from uh, fucking Cham's Darksaber swinging around and killing people. Velnos, on the other hand, is uh, about to engage in combat with two dragonborn on the left-hand side of the of the area. And you also still have another two dragonborn that are in front of you. Okay, so you guys just walk into the clearing like fucking bosses. And those two dragonborn immediately are going to engage with you. Because they're kind of still disoriented, I'm going to give you guys first crack. And just gesture after you, darling. All, All right. right, so I'm just going to kind of march on in there mounted on my griffin and then as they look at me i'm just gonna take my greatsword and charge 
Okay, so it's going to be a charge roll, which means it's going to be a attack of momentum. I'm going to say you're going to get a plus two to that. Uh, so roll to attack. Oh, oh my fuck. god. Okay, you're, you're going to hit and you're going to crit. Uh, roll for damage. That's going to actually be a 13, but that also critted. It means it's going to be 26. So basically what you do is you fly towards him with the flaming sword out kind of like a lance in front of you. And as you get to him, you impale him directly through the chest, killing him instantly, and then fly up into the air with the corpse still impaled on your sword. Now, the thing with that sword is because it is bathed in blue flame most of the time, Basically, what happens is, is eventually the sword just cooks through his armor. And as you're flying up into the air, the corpse just sort of melts off the end of your sword and falls down into the into the woods below. So you killed him. Arch, are you going to attack the other one? Or are you just going to leave him for... You want me to roll for him to see if he's shitting his pants? Yeah, I'm going to let him shit his pants because there's a lot of dead bodies on the field. Going to start partying. Ooh. All right, so he rolled a three, so he's he's in a catatonic state right now. He's, he's not moving anywhere. He's curled up into a little ball. He's freaking the fuck out. He's having a really bad trip. And Arch, any of the dead ones that are still able to be animated that aren't just, like, chunks of meat, you will be able to reanimate, including the one... The only ones that you see right now, though, are the ones that are over near Velnos, because the ones that Cham killed are all inside the darkness sphere. Well, I was going to say, um, as far as people being eviscerated, with the whole being able to meld them, would I be able to bring them back together? You need to have enough to actually have the zombies. So pretty much almost all of them are able to be reanimated. It would be like if one of them got turned into mush, that I would say is that's kind of where the line is drawn. With my spellcasting feats, uh, it's a range of 60 feet around me. Okay, that will cover everything in the camp. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to resuscitate the three dragonborn inside of the darkness sphere that Cham killed that fell asleep, the two other ones that he has killed inside of there, as well as the ones that are over by Velnos, and the one that is uh, currently being spit-roasted also comes back to life, still impaled on the spit-roast. He's not having a good time, by the way. Basically, you reanimate all the dead ones, so they are now under your control, um, and they're still the one shitting his pants. Velnos, I'm going to have you go next with your group, and then we're going to go back to Cham, because most of the rest of them are kind of incapacitated. This is going to be a targeted attack. Both of those will hit. I'm going to set the vines on the ground. When they get close enough, they're going to shoot up their groin and through the spine. If it doesn't kill them, they'll be crippled. Well, both of those, even though they're targeted, both of those will still hit with the level that you, you hit at, so I'm going to have you roll for damage. So basically what that's going to do is exactly what you wanted it to do. So the vines, basically you shoot them underground. You put both of your forearms out splaying out to each side and the vines shoot into the ground, go under the ground and then shoot up below the one of the dragonborn that's in front of you. The vines crisscross and go through his lower groin, severing his spinal cord around the base. His legs then immediately become jello and he falls to the ground. His upper body is still able to be moved, but you have basically crippled his lower half. That is enough to both sever both of their lower spinal cords. So both of them fall to the ground after you have thoroughly crippled them with fucking vine spears. Uh, and they're now crawling on the ground. The other one is crapping himself and there's still a couple that are wandering around inside the darkness sphere. However, I'm I'm going to roll for both of their sanities because they probably don't know what the hell is going on. One of them is able to find his way out of the darkness sphere, the one that rolled the 20. However, he then walks into seeing all of his friends either dead or crippled and crawling on the ground. And he then basically just, instead of being captured, he decides it's a much easier idea to simply kill himself. And he stabs himself through the stomach with the sword in order to not be taken prisoner. The one that's still inside, however, is wandering around, and I believe that is the last one who was alive. Cham, I'm going to let you take care of that. Listen, check, you do find the last Dragonborn because he is still wandering around trying to find somebody. Oh, I, got uh, over, I got fucked over to that one. All yeah, right, that one, that one will hit. The, the first attack will not hit, the second attack will. Uh, so the second attack is, again, with, with your dagger. The sneak attack, which is 24, plus the 9. Basically, what you're going to do is 31 damage. You pretty much do the same thing you did with the last Dragonborn, except instead of being doing it in the front of the head, you do it from behind and then kill him. He falls forward onto the ground and dies. There are still two of them that are crippled on the ground, but combat is now basically over. 